Friday, December 22nd, 2023. So the rudder is almost completed. I just need to do the riveting. Um, got a couple things to work on there. I've gone ahead and done the uh, scuffing, especially along the rivet lines. It just basically helps the etching process for the paint. Um, the big thing with this rudder is the rudder tip and we talk about that here. Okay, so the rudder tip is basically this fairing piece that sits at the top of the rudder and this uh, fiberglass piece that has a joggle along here. And th this is not drilled. I have drilled these holes after I've clecoed it all together. And something that I've encountered as I'm doing this is, um, well, one thing you have to do is these holes, excuse me, these holes, uh, these first seven holes are all dimpled, just like these are dimpled here. And then the fiberglass, you have to take the countersink tool and run it through here in order to countersink the fiberglass. Now, what happens is, what I'm finding is that this countersink tool, as you're running the tool through these holes, it's kind of wallowing out the hole and it's actually enlarging the hole where the rivet will be uh, pushed through. So this hole is now, these holes, this hole here is perfect because I didn't have to countersink it. But these holes here where the silver uh, clecos are, are actually enlarged because of that countersink tool. So what I'm doing here is actually I'm putting a washer on the other end of the rivet in fact, I have, I don't know if this can see, be seen or not, but I have washers on these Clecos because the Clecos wouldn't hold. Uh, you push the Cleco in, it would pull right through because that hole got enlarged. So I have washers on the end of the Clecos, and then when it becomes time to rivet, I'll push the rivet through, and I take this number six washer, and I hold it on the head, or excuse me, on the, on the back of the, of the rivet, and then pull the rivet, and it will hold. So it'll look something like this. This is the... Um, 989 rivet and this is what it'll look like with the washer and you can see that it's really uh, expands that gr that grab for that rivet and it really helps out a lot the next thing we'll have to deal with is there is a gap here and I'm going to show in a minute how I'm going to resolve this gap So I've set the rivets. These are the 989 rivets, seven of these, and they're in the dimples. And then on the back side here are the number six washers. So this is just a much more secure connection to this fiberglass tip. So on both sides, a total of 14. Now behind that is the 998 rivet, and uh, that one is not countersunk and the rest of these rivets all the way down on the rest of this tip are going to be 998 rivets. Uh, I did not put a washer on that and because that hole was in pretty good shape, so that rivet's holding nicely. Okay, so next I'm gonna talk about this gap right here and we're talking about how we're gonna take care of this. All right, so in order to fill this gap, I'm gonna use this uh, fairing filler from uh, West Systems and uh, using this epoxy resin, this is what it looks like here. Um, gotta work quickly. I just did one pump of the resin and one pump of the hardener and just mix this in until it kind of turns into like peanut butter. Uh, I've masked off the front of the aluminum here with this resin release tape so that I won't have anything that's stuck to the aluminum. And what I'm gonna do is just start pushing this in. Actually, I have uh, taped off the bottom here so that I won't have any squeeze through. So I'll start filling this gap in. And then once it dries, we'll just shape it with sandpaper. If you uh, watched any of my Bearhawk build videos, you'll see that I use this same uh, material when I was making the Ram Air um, on the on the bottom of the cowling just below the propeller so I had a forward-facing 
um, intake and I didn't want a air box on the bottom of the cowling so I created a um, a three inch intake a ram intake and I just used this stuff around it and it came out pretty well so this is not bad to work with um, I do notice you can feel the cup because it's feel the heat coming through as the as the epoxy and, and everything's starting to cure so I want to get on this before it sets up so the epoxy resin filler has cured overnight and I've gone ahead and sanded and blended it all in and I think it came out pretty good no more hole that's the biggest thing I was concerned about is that gap that was right here just water and things getting down in there this is going to be up so high nobody's going to really see it um, and then i also cut the hole for the beacon so i'm going to be using the uh, super bright led beacon i got that uh, i was a little skeptical about that i used it last the uh, last time on the the bear hawk and that thing works great and it's not very expensive and so i'm just going to use it again uh, on the, the tsi so now we'll go ahead and mount this onto the rudder. So the rudder's completed and I did a temporary install. Got the uh, AN 4-10 bolts in the hinges and it's amazing how everything is just, the lines are absolutely perfect. The gaps are absolutely even. And, uh, there's absolutely no binding or anything in the hinges. So still I'm just continually impressed with how this kit's coming together and how amazing it is.